Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, we're going to be going over the new job Samurai, which is coming to Final Fantasy XIV in its next expansion, Stormblood. Now, the footage you're seeing here is actually footage that I got from my recent trip to San Francisco for the North American Media Tour. So I am actually playing Samurai in the footage. However, as you can see, I'm just kind of running around. I kind of barely know what my skills do right here. Unfortunately, Samurai was one of the last jobs I was able to kind of even begin to grab footage for at the end of the day. So I don't really have a whole lot that looks impressive. If you're looking for something that's like super in-depth and has a lot of great footage, I would highly recommend you check out Very Mary's channel. I know he was planning on doing a super in-depth samurai video, so I'll include that in the link to the description. Be sure to go give him some love. For this video though, we're just going to be covering the basics of samurai. Now a reminder that everything you see here, every number, every effect, everything visually numerically whatever is all subject to change right up until june 16th so take it with a grain of salt that may not be that way by the time you get your hands on it so samurai is a new dps coming in patch 4.0 and samurai focuses on branching combos to build up two resources sen and kenki kenki is spent on powerful off global cooldown skills and pretty much most of your global cooldown skills will actually generate this resource Sen, on the other hand, is spent on an ability called Iaijutsu, which is an ability that changes depending on how many Sens you have. Before we can talk about Sens and Kenki, let's talk about the basic combos that Samurai has. Now, the Tier 1 and 2 combo abilities each provide 5 Kenki once you reach a high enough level to get them traded, while Finishers always provide 10 Kenki. So the first combo they have is Hakazi into Jinpu into Gekko. Jinpu actually provides a 15% damage buff, and Gekko opens the Getsu Sen. Another combo you have is Hakazi into Shifu into Kasha. Shifu provides a 10% attack speed buff, and Kasha opens up the Ka Sen. Finally, you have a two-part combo in that of Hakazi into Yukikaze. Yukikaze places a slashing debuff on the target and opens up the final Setsu Sen. Your goal is to rotate between these three combos and buffs to activate the various sends depending on what you're trying to do. Now with just one sen, Ei Jutsu will turn into Higanbana, I'm so sorry for the pronunciation, a single target dot that actually lasts 60 seconds on the target. With its base potency plus the damage over time potency, it's close to a thousand potency for just that one use. Of course that potency is over an entire minute, but still it's pretty good. Now with two sends, Ei Jutsu becomes Tenka Goten, which is just a conal AoE, really good for AoE pulls. And finally, with three sends, Ei Jutsu becomes Madare Setsugeka, a massive potency single target attack. Seriously, 720 potency on the server I got to play on. So you'll basically on a single target want to maintain the single target dot while getting in as many three send attacks as possible. In AoE, you'd probably be burning it every two. I don't imagine that you'd take the time to put a 60 second dot in an AoE pull. Most things aren't going to last that long in that case. You also have another ability that helps you generate sends in Mekyo Shisui, which allows you to perform any of these combo skills without meeting the combo requirements. This allows you to instantly do Yukikaze, Kasha, and Gekko and generate three sends. Maybe in AoE you do a one and a two, maybe you do two and then get one of them and then open one of them manually for more AoE. It leaves you with a lot of options. Speaking of their AoE, Samurai have insanely good AoE and it's so satisfying to pull off. So they have AoE combos that actually generate Sen so you can get to the two Sen combo of Tenka Goten. Now Fuga into Oka grants the Ka Sen and Fuga into Mangetsu grants the Getsu Sen. With those two Sens, you can get to Tenka Goten for even more AoE damage. Now there's a lot of other AoE skills that they have, but we'll get into those as we talk about the use of Kenki and their other off-global cooldown skills. So while I feel like we've covered Sens in pretty good detail, now let's move on to their other resource, Kenki. Kenki, as we said earlier, is generated from all your global cooldowns, and depending on which tier of the combo it is, it'll generate a different amount. On top of that, you have Meditate, which generates Kenki every tick for 15 seconds. I know you Final Fantasy XI people are already digging it. You also have another skill called Hagakure, which turns your Sens into Kenki, granting 20 Kenki for each Sen. It's going to be interesting seeing the people who come up with the rotations determining when you're going to want to use that to get all that Kenki. They also gave Samurais a Mercy Stroke type ability called Ageha. Well, it generates some Kenki when you hit with it normally, but it generates twice as much Kenki if you get the killing blow with it. Samurai also has a high mobility combo that deals some pretty decent damage. Hisatu Yaten is an off-global cooldown that costs 10 Kenki. It deals damage and forces you to jump away from the target, kind of like the old repelling shot. 
When you're at range, you can then follow up with an enhanced NB, which comboed off of the Hisatsu Yaten that you did before it. Now that NB will generate Tenkenki that you just spent, and then you can close the gap again with Hisatsu Gyoten, which costs another Tenkenki. Now Kenki actually has quite a few other uses. I feel like Samurai has far more uses for their resource compared to all the other jobs who just got a resource. Most of these abilities also don't share recast time with any other ability, so they can be executed in rapid succession if you do it right. So first you have Hisatsu Shinten, which is just a high potency off global cooldown. It's got a one second recast time and costs 25 Kenki. You have Hisatsu Kyoten, which is AoE, one second recast, costs 25 Kenki. And then finally you have Hisatsu Gurin, which is massive damage in an AoE on a two minute cooldown. It's basically like a super melee flare. It's 800 potency on the first target, and then it has that flare type fall off where it's 10, 20, 30, 40, etc. percentages. It does cost 50 Kenki, however, but with a two minute cooldown, you should definitely have Kenki spare when this comes uh, available. Samurai also have an ability called Third Eye, which is basically a counterattack type skill. It gives you a 3 second buff that will reduce the damage of the next attack you take by 50%. Now since you only have a 3 second window to get hit when you have this ability open, it has to be used at the right time. Now it just sounds like why would you ever forcefully be hit or it's just a skill based counter? Well the thing is, when you actually are hit during third eye, it gives you an effect called open eyes which can then be used to activate one of two skills. The first ability you can choose to use is called Starry Eyes, which is an off-global cooldown single target ability, 200 potency, 25 Kenki. Now it's actually considerably less potency than the Shinten skill, which costs the exact same amount of Kenki, so at first glance it's kind of hard to find a use for it. However, it does not share the one second recast with Hisatsu Shinten, so you can actually do both of them about 0.5 seconds apart, giving it a little bit more viability. Otherwise, Starry Eyes is a significant power uh, potency loss compared to Shinten. The other skill you have is Merciful Eyes, which allows you to restore HP, and the potency actually scales with attack power. Third Eye itself has a very short cooldown, so expect to be using this fairly frequently. Just don't force yourself to stand in the AoE to get a Third Eye proc, because then you'll just end up using it on Merciful Eyes every time, and, well, that's no good for anyone. Samurai do also have a buff that I almost forgot to mention, uh, Hisatsu Kaiten. It increases the potency of their next weapon skill by 150%. It costs 20 Kenki gauge, but it only has a 5 second cooldown, so it can be used pretty reliably so long as you have Kenki to use on it. Now since I know if I don't cover it right now, it is going to be a question, your EI Jutsu skills are actually considered weapon skills. So yes, you could use this on the 720 potency hit you get with the triple sends. And other than the melee cross rolls, that's it. That's all the samurai abilities. So as you can see, samurais have barely any raid utility other than the slashing debuff. I suppose the idea is that their potencies are absolutely bonkers to make up for this. Almost like the idea of what Monk was supposed to be before. Incredibly selfish DPS, but considering you always have at least two tanks for benefit from slashing, I suppose that'll be utility enough. Honestly, when you actually do damage as a samurai, your potencies are so utterly ridiculous that I can see this working, regardless of what we may know now in 3.x. Oh, no raid utility means it's not viable. Honestly, it's insane how much damage you do. When you get your hands on your samurai and you see some of those big direct and critical hits, you're going to be like, holy moly, especially on the 800 potency and the 720 potency. And then you buff that by 150%? Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm just going crazy thinking about over 1,000 potency on that triple cent ability. The question is though, will that actually be enough to make them viable without raid utility? I think considering how big their potencies are compared to the other three melees, yeah, it might actually be enough. This might be the perfect... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The perfect example of the way Monk was supposed to be before, just done way better. By the way, it's also fun as hell, if that helps. But before I end the video, I, I hadn't even brought up melee cross rolls other than just saying I hadn't brought them up yet. So uh, I've already covered this in the other videos. They have Second Wind, they have Invigorate, Bloodbath. Imagine healing off some of these skills with Bloodbath. Oh man, Bath, anyway. Goad, they also have. So if anything, they can bring that as their utility if they really want to bring something from the cross roll system. Uh, they have Leg Sweep, which is an off-global cooldown stun. It's got no damage on it, so you'd, taking, you'd be taking it literally just for the stun. You have Arm's Length, which makes it so that if an enemy attacks you, they get a slow debuff. 
I don't know if that'll be useful or not. We'll have to wait and see. They do have Diversion, which is Quelling Strikes for Melee. Otherwise, listen, with those potencies, you're going to need Diversion, okay? Faint is the melee half of the previous virus. Uh, it reduces the enemy's strength and dexterity, whereas the caster version, Addle, reduces the int and mind, so you just have the physical portion of that. Crutch lets you remove the bind and heavy effects on an ally, but not on yourself. So again, a very odd utility to throw in the melee cross roll. We'll see how it pans out when we actually see how the content works. And finally, you have True North, which removes positional requirements for weapon skills for a short time. I don't think you'll ever take that. You don't have any positional requirements. That's something I completely forgot to mention on Samurai. You have no positional requirements, so have a ball. And that's going to be a wrap for my Samurai Overview. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned for all the latest Stormblood information, news, guides, everything. Also, again, don't forget, Mary has a much more in-depth Samurai video. He spent a lot of time on the job, so be sure to go check that out as well. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video, and until then, take care.